Hi there. In this video, we will go over some application problems involving right triangles. It may help to draw a diagram, so let's do that, along with the known and unknown values. We know the angle we are looking at theta is 25 degrees, and its adjacent side is length 14, we want to find the length of the hypotenuse. Also, let's go back to the trig definitions to possibly help us out. Looking at the definition of trig functions closely, we see that cosine and secant may be best to use in order to help us find h. I'm going to use cosine since I like it better. Remember cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so we can plug in our knowns and unknown h then solve for h. Multiply both sides by h, then divide both sides by cos 25 to get h by itself. Then we bust out a calculator to evaluate. For the graphing calculator, we need to make sure it is in the degree setting. Then we can just input our answer and press enter. Rounding to one decimal place, we get h is about 15.4. Another example. So we have a right triangle with theta being 32 degrees, an opposite side of length 19. We want to find the hypotenuse. So we draw a diagram to see what we can do. Now let's go back to the definition of right triangle trigonometry to see what may help. Looks like sine theta equals opposite over hypotenuse will be the most helpful here. So let's plug in what we know. Theta is 32 degrees, opposite side is 19 and hypotenuse is h. Now we solve for h.
When we get h by itself, we use our calculator to approximate the result. We just input 19 over sine 32. Make sure the calculator is in degree mode. Then hit enter and we get about 35.9 as the hypotenuse. And done. In this example, we want to solve for r given the diagram below, and theta is 66 degrees, and x is 16. Knowing that sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse, we can solve for r using that fact. Get rid of the fraction by multiplying both sides by 16 plus r. Then we do a bit of algebra to get r by itself. Factor r out on the right side, then divide to get r by itself. Now we just input in the calculator to get what R is. Make sure the setting is on degree mode. Inputting it in the calculator, we get 169. Before moving on to another application example, we need to go over a brief introduction to inverse trigonometric values. For this, we will go back to our first definition of trigonometric functions, the right angle with radius r and the unit circle where radius is 1. So for example A, we read this as the sine of angle theta gives a ratio of 0. And we are looking for angles that are between 0 and 360. Remember that sine theta is y over r, 
And for us, r is 1, which means we are looking for where y is 0. Examining the unit circle here, we can see that the places where y is 0 are at 0 degrees, 180 degrees, and 360 degrees. I forgot to write 360 degrees, but I'll write it in a second. Our notation for finding these angles, basically so we can isolate the theta, is sine inverse of zero is equal to the angle theta. Face. Similarly, for example B, we read it as cosine of angle theta is equal to zero. And we know cosine is x over r, and r is 1 since we are looking at the unit circle. Rewriting it in an inverse notation, to get theta by itself, we write theta is equal to inverse cosine of the ratio 0. Then looking at the unit circle, we look for where x is 0, and we see that it is at 90 degrees and 270 degrees. Example C, we want the angle theta that gives ratio of 1 half for sine. Let's rewrite using the inverse notation. Also remember that sine theta is equal to y over r, and r is 1 since we are looking at the unit circle. Note, we will be going over inverse trig functions more a little later, so don't worry if this is a bit confusing. To find what angles give a y value of 1 half is what we want, and our circle, we see that it is at 30 and 150 degrees. To see how we know it's at 30 degrees, we can look at the table for common values of the trigonometric functions. Similarly, to find the angle where theta is equal to the inverse cosine of the ratio 1 half, we know it relates to the x value being 1 half on the circle. And looking at the common values of the right triangle, we can see that at 60 degrees, cosine theta is 1 half. Also, at 300 degrees, it is at a half Example E, we want to find the angle theta that gives the sine of 1. We know sine is y over r, and r is 1 on the unit circle, so we want where y is 1 on the unit circle. Looking at the diagram, we see that y is at 1, 
at 90 degrees and negative 1 at 270 degrees. We want where y is 1, so 90 degrees it is. Example F. Cosine theta equals 1 is x over r. r is 1 on the unit circle, so we just need to see where x is 1 on the unit circle. From the diagram, we can see at 0 and 360 degrees is where x is 1. Now we look at tangent of theta is equal to 1. And tangent is y over x. So we look on our special right triangle ratio values to see where that is. We can see that a 45 degrees y over x is equal to 1. So the angle where tangent theta is 1 is at 45 degrees and also 225 degrees. Note that we have to include 225 degrees because negative y over negative x is positive and we wanted positive 1. For this example, we want tangent theta equal to negative root 3. So rewriting in inverse notation, we get theta by itself. Then we look at our special right triangles to see some common values. And notice at 60 degrees, tangent theta is root 3. It's not negative root 3, but that's because it is in quadrant 1 on the diagram. In quadrant 2 and quadrant 4, tangent theta would give us a negative root 3. And the angles they go with are 120 degrees and 300 degrees. So for this example, we want the angle theta that gives the ratio negative root 3 over 2. On the unit circle, this means that the angles will be in quadrant 3 and quadrant 4 since the ratio is negative. Looking at the special right triangles, we can use 60 degrees as a reference angle. So we have 240 and 300 degrees where the sine of theta is negative root 3 over 2. For cosine theta equal to negative root 3 over 2, we want where the angle will give a negative ratio of x over r, so quadrant 2 and quadrant 3. Now looking at special right triangles, 
we can use 30 degrees as our reference angle since cosine 30 is root 3 over 2. Looking at the unit circle, we can see 150 degrees and 210 degrees give us the result of negative root 3 over 2. Now, let's look at the application problem we wanted to look at. We want to find out the angle that a rope makes with a tent pole, where rope is 67 feet and anchor is 41.9 feet away from the pole. So let's draw a diagram to help us out. And don't judge my tent drawing. Now that we have our diagram, let's label the opposite side, the adjacent side, and the hypotenuse in reference to our angle theta. Looking at our definition of right triangle trigonometry, we can see that sine of theta can help us out here since it's opposite over hypotenuse. So let's write our known information down. To get theta by itself, we write it in inverse notation. Then we use our calculator to do the rest. To evaluate this with a graphing calculator, we click the second button, then the sine button. This gives the sine inverse. Then we just put our numbers in and press enter. And we get that theta is 38.7 degrees.